Welcome to another video from the off grid garage, sunny Australia. Yes, 30 degrees. Last month of winter. Uh, oh well, it's early in the morning. We've got only three amps outside. It'll come. Okay, here in the background, I have already prepared our test setup for testing the SunCrit inverter. And I want to show you some of the features this amazing device has, because I think quite a few people will be very interested in this device because it is so easy to set up, to program and to operate. So let me walk you through what I have set up here. Well, pretty much I have reconstructed exactly this setup here. We have our grid cable here, which is connected to the house with some extension cables now. This is our incoming grid. I've got an RCD safety switch in between and also a meter. This is the setup you have in your house as well. Your grid comes in, goes into a meter, and then you've got a safety switch. I just have this the other way around, otherwise this one will block our display, which doesn't make any difference from a safety perspective. So this is the meter your energy company reads every month or every three months or every six months, depending where you are. From there, a cable goes all the way to your house. And then you've got all your power outlets. I always say power points. Here in Australia, the power outlets are called power points. Some people have mentioned this in the comments and say, what is a power point? These normal power outlets are called power points for some reason here in Australia. I know it is weird, but it's a weird country. So <laughs> just stick with it. <laughs> You got all your power outlets inside your house where you can plug in your, your, your fridge and all your, your computer and your TV and all your other applications. And also your lights are connected there as well. Well, as an example, I've got a 100 watt light bulb here on the desk, which we are going to plug in very soon. Oh God, this is terrible. I hope this is not showing in the video as well. Okay, we've got our power supply here and we will connect this very soon to the inverter here as well. At the moment, Let's turn it off to make it very clear. At the moment, everything is turned off. The inverter is not turned on. The inverter is not even connected to anything. So this is all standard as it is, power supply to your house. Now I want to show you some parameters here, first of all. So we've got 241 volts, 0, 0, 0, 0 amps, and 0 watts. So nothing is connected, of course, so the meter shows 0. I have split up this cable here to uh, enable us to connect the uh, the limiter sensor later on. And this is what you have to do in your meter box. You have to connect the clamp to one of the cables which goes to your face, goes to your active, to your supply, to the house. This is just a single face. So we've got one active, which is the red one. We've got the black one as the neutral and we've got the green yellow as the earth or ground contact. But this is already being done in your meter box for you. You will have single wires and you just put the clamp around the correct wire and you are set. But there are options with this inverter where you don't have to use the clamp and it still works. I'll show you this in this video. We are going to plug in our light bulb here. There we go. This is, as I said, a 100 watt. Oh yeah, it's nice and warm. 100 watts and it shows us 123.9 watts. This is the energy we are now pulling from the grid through our system and we use this energy inside the house for our application. And 0.515 amps for this load. Okay, and here comes the magic now. So we are turning on our power supply here and I want to start with a lower voltage. Hey Simba, do you want to help? The Sun grid inverter comes with two booklets here. One of them describes all the technical details and how to connect, how to actually connect your Sun grid inverter at home and also talks about the potential of connecting solar panels directly to it. Because if you don't know it, the Sun grid inverter has a built-in MPPT solar charge controller as well. So you can see the IU curves here for solar panels and it explains all that in here. Gives you an overview about the correct cable sizing for your installation and gives you examples how to connect your solar panels to your inverter. 
if you put them in series and then in parallel and what to do and what not to do. And here we've got an overview about the technical details here of the SunCrit inverter. I have the 90 volt version and you can see we've got an MPPT voltage range of 50 to 80 volts and an operating DC voltage range from 45 to 90 volts. The big advantage of this inverter is you can either connect solar panels directly to the terminals here at the top, positive, positive, negative, or you can use a battery and connect it to these terminals as long as you have at least 45 volts up to 90 volts. And our 50 volt lithium iron phosphate battery is exactly in this range, so we can use it with this inverter and we don't have to connect solar panels. We will do this as well because I'm really keen to see how this works and I want to test this in all aspects. We want to connect solar panels to this inverter and feed energy back from the solar panels directly to the house without any batteries at all. You don't need batteries with this inverter. It is super flexible. Connect batteries, connect solar panels, it doesn't matter, it will work. And the, um, the second booklet here is actually far more interesting because this tells you exactly how to connect, this tells you exactly how to connect like a three-phase system with three single inverters connecting to, connecting to one phase each. And this is probably the most exciting part of it, how to stack inverters up on the same active. See, this is only a single phase supply. We've got the neutral down here, the black, and the red one is our active, our phase, which supplies our house with power for uh, fridge, um, TV, and light, and computers, and all your stuff. Same setup as here. And they have connected two inverters here with different solar arrays to the same active. So you can actually use more than one of these inverters here and plug them into the same power supply at your house and supply more power to your face. And they also have examples here for US split phase AC grid connections with one inverter supplying 240 volts with one inverter supplying only 110 volts. And they also have examples in here where you have two separate inverters supplying 110 volts each to your system in a split phase environment like in the US. So this all can be done with this inverter here. It is very versatile and I think it is amazing. I like it. Okay, let's um, let's fire up our system here and see what it actually does when we connect it only to DC without connecting it to I should put this here so people can see it's not connected. Well, as with all inverters, we should use a resistor before we connect the DC input to our inverter because we will have capacitors inside. They will charge when we connect the DC and it could get the spark. What I can do here, I can just limit my current output a little bit further down. So the spark will be very, very limited. This is maybe only one amps now. We are at 49 volts and we connect the cable, we'll see a little spark. There it is. And it's now connected. And we will see the inverter has not turned on. So the contacts down here, they are not live yet. I can touch them with my fingers here and there's no power. The inverter is still turned off, it's not working. Even if I crank up the voltage a bit to 58 volts here, there's nothing going on. There's 13 milliamps going into the inverter from the DC side if it's turned off. This is a 0.7 of a watt which the inverter takes from the DC side if nothing is connected. Okay, then let's connect our AC output. And of course, it's the other way around. And here I've got my voltmeter on AC sitting and I just want to measure the actual terminals here of the inverter. So neutral and active, zero volts, neutral and earth, nothing, and the earth and active, nothing. So this is totally safe to touch. There's no power on these contacts. Okay, and here's the big moment. Let's, um, let's just um, plug this one in and see what happens, right? Okay, we plug it in and the inverter turns on straight away. 
It uh, gives us the voltage here. Uh, let me get a better camera here. Okay, I have now installed the other camera directly in front of the display here of the inverter. We still have reflections in there, so that's as good as it gets. So what we can see here is, let me get my pointer here. Well, the display gives you different information. It has the brand and model name in here and also the software version 6.1, which is the brand new one. It gives you an ID like a serial number down here and also has a internal temperature and the date got a solar panel symbol down here which gives us the DC input voltage it measures at the terminals at the moment 29.1 on the other side we have the grid voltage it measures 236.9 volts and we also have a second watt reading here which is zero I'll talk about this in a second and this is the grid parameters basically and this is our DC input parameters here and this is the output of the inverter so as soon as you plug it in, it won't do anything at the moment. Okay, let's crank up the DC voltage a little bit. 30, 40 volts, 45, 50 volts, 52, 53, 54 volts. Okay, we'll leave it like this. Yeah, 53 volts. This is our lithium iron phosphate voltage when the battery is charged. So at the moment we have only our load connected here to our house system and the inverter is plugged in as well connects down here to the socket and goes with this black wire just into one of your power outlets not a power point power outlets inside your house this is all the installation you need and at the moment we have 127 watts for the light bulb if I unplug the light bulb turn off we have a standby power for the inverter of 3.5 watts coming from the grid Okay, in the inverter you've got um, different buttons here on the right hand side. You've got a configuration like the cogwheel symbol for the configuration. You've got an up and a down button and a home button. Pressing the home button first gets you into the menu. This is the whole menu you have on the inverter. You've got only five items and you can dial through with the up and down button as you would expect it. Very intuitive to operate. The flash here always brings you back when you press the confirm or config button up here into your normal power display. The next button is the grid waveform. We go into the OK button to enter this menu and it shows you exactly the waveform the inverter outputs at the moment. I have found information online that this is actually just a photo which the inverter shows but it's clearly not. And you can already see down here at this point in the curve where the, how the curve is actually moving around and you got a little bit of noise. See how it moves? And the same up here in the top part. You can see the pixels moving. So this is actually the actual curve the inverter puts out. And once you put load on the inverter and watch this curve here, you can see how it moves and well, it gets a bit dirty sometimes. You have these little spikes and these little, these little dips in this curve. So you can actually see, so you can actually see that this one is moving. This is not just a graphic they are displaying. This is the actual output sine wave of the inverter. Okay, we click on the home button again to go back. And the next step would be the energy menu. We go click on OK. And here we can see that this inverter has done 1.8 kilowatt hours, presumably for testing. We haven't, we haven't produced any power today. This will give you a graph later on. Yeah, here, this is our sine wave and this is the next menu. This can give you a load curve of energy you have produced with your inverter. Just an example how it looks like on the actual display. And we go back to the home menu. And the next one obviously is the date and time settings. So again, very intuitive. We've got the 1st of August 2021. This is correct. And we just press the config button to jump to the next one. And the 1132 home button again. And then it's asking if you want to save the settings. And the valid color is red. So if you want to save your settings, you have to get the red color over there. See how it jumps when I press the up and down button here. So red is the actual valid 
color. If I press OK now, it will save the settings and the date is correctly set. That was the time and date. And then the last point in the menu here is the configuration actually. And going in there, this is the whole configuration you have. There's no other screen, there's no other menu point, there's no submenu, nothing. These are all the parameters you can set inside this inverter. And believe me, this is enough to make it work for any, any situation even for my complicated situation. So again, here from the top, you've got the LCD backlight always on. I've ticked this at the moment for the demonstration here, making this video. If you untick this, the display will turn off after 10 seconds. You can turn on the internal limiter. We will talk about this later on. And then you can set a maximum current the inverter will draw from your battery or your solar. So if you have a small battery only, you can set this one to like 20 amps and the inverter will make sure it's not drawing more than 20 amps from your DC source. I have unticked this at the moment because I have unlimited amps. And here in the other line, you've got another option to limit the output of the inverter. You can set a power limit of what the inverter will draw from your battery and solar. So you can either limit the current or you can limit the power for your DC input. And then you can set a cutoff voltage where the inverter turns off and stops producing energy to save your battery from being discharged too far. And you also can set a reboot voltage or a restart voltage, I would call it, when the inverter kicks in again and starts working again. And this is pretty much everything you get inside the configuration menu. So at the moment we have only the inverter plugged in and no other load at all. We have a solar or battery input of around 52 volts and I have limited the current to 2.8 amps. This would simulate a solar panel now which gives you well 100 watts, well 120 watts or something and it feeds in directly to your DC terminals here at the top. And the inverter is able to create 114 watts out of it and push this energy into your home grid. And because we've got no other load connected in our house at the moment, just the inverter, it will of course export all these energy into your grid. Yeah, we can see here 119 watts going this way into your grid. At the moment, I'm exporting this energy coming from our solar panel or from the battery. This is the whole setup to make a grid tire inverter from your battery or solar panel. This is all you need. And of course, when I give the inverter more power now by increasing the current, we will see that the output of the inverter increases as well. You can see we are at 165, 170 watts already. And I just want to go back into our menu for a moment and I want to show you how to limit the power output. So we go in here and tick this box here and we go into this field, click on OK and then we can increase this power and say we only want to have 90 watts as our maximum output of the inverter and we make yes red, click on OK and now the inverter restarts internally and now even we have seen 220 watts just now it should now be limited to only 90 watts output. Even we have the strongest solar panel or the strongest battery connected the inverter now limits to 90 watt output. And here again, 95, it shows us here on the meter connected to our grid. So we are pushing 94 watts into our grid at the moment. Well, you would say, why is this function interesting? Potentially, you could measure all your appliances inside your house, which are running on standby to determine your lowest power usage inside your house, your minimum power spend your house has. You've got your TV connected, you've got your receiver connected and your radio and your computer has a standby loss. And you know, all this adds up to a minimum power usage inside your house, which may be like 100 watts. You never use less than 100 watts inside your house. You could set the inverter here now to 100 watts and it produces always these 100 watts even with a very small solar panel. That's what many people do in Europe 
when they live in apartments, they've got solar panels out on their balconies on the rail and have these inverters connected and plugged in and it compensates for their standby loss. They're continuously pushing 100 watts into their house grid, but they are never exporting anything because they're always using at least these 100 watts inside their home. So they don't need any clamp meter. They don't need to have any of these additional functions. They just need the inverter and a solar panel with 100 watts maximum. They will produce energy during the day and feed this into their own house grid. So for example, if we connect our light back to the grid, which has 122 watts now, the inverter still produces our 90 watts we have set as a limit. And we are now pulling 31 watts from the grid. This is the difference. 90 watts is coming from here, 30 watts is coming from here, makes the 120 for the light bulb. Well, another example would be a pool pump, which runs during the day. You could set the inverter to the same power as your pool pump has. My one, for example, has 750 watts. I would hook up some solar panels to the inverter and let it produce and inject 750 watt into my house grid. I would not export any energy at all to the grid because my pool pump will use all the energy this inverter will produce. And I'm not paying any power anymore for my pool pump. And believe me, if you have a pool pump running, it is a lot of energy during the year. Okay, and now we set our limit here, like 500 watt. We cannot produce 500 watt with a power supply. So, and we want to set our cutoff voltage here at say 49 volts. See, it says 490, but then times 0.1. So this actually means then 49 volts. And the same with the reboot voltage. We will set this one to say 51. And then after the battery recharges to 50 and 51 volts, the inverter will start up again. Okay, make yes red to save. We go back in our settings, the whole system reboots because we have made changes now. So again, because we have no limit set at the moment, the inverter produces as much energy as it gets from the solar panel or from the battery. So in this case, we are producing 190 watts now with the inverter and our light bulb has only 120 watts. We should export around 70 watts now, which we actually do. Okay, so we have now 56 volts DC input voltage and I'm decreasing the voltage now. So there's a cloud coming. The power goes down on our DC input. So 90, so 49 volt is our cutoff voltage. We are going further down. And there we go. We are under 49 volts and the inverter turns off. So this is the low voltage disconnect, which you actually can program inside the inverter here, which is super handy. Most of the cheaper inverters cannot be programmed. They are sit on 44 volts, which is far too low in my eyes for a low voltage disconnect for a battery. And then we ramp up the voltage again and at 51, it should kick in, start producing energy. So it's waiting for the battery to recharge. Battery voltage is rising. And I think it kicks in a little bit earlier than 51, actually. Yep, there it kicks in already. So at the moment, we are still producing 180 watts in our inverter for a 120 watt load inside our house. And we are still exporting 66 watts to the grid. Well, and as you know, there are people out there which have weird contracts with their power suppliers and they are not allowed to feed in any power during the day. Or some of you may even not able to feed power in at all. So this is basically different from country to country and varies a lot. So how can you use the inverter now without feeding energy back to the grid? Well, there was the power limit or the amp limit you can set inside the inverter, but this is a fixed setting and it will only produce that much power unless you change the settings inside the inverter. Not very handy because your load inside your house is usually not constant. It's going up and down depending on what kind of appliances you're using. So that's why they have invented the limit sensor. 
So here's the limit sensor again. See the notch in this plug? This fits only one way into the inverter. And then you can secure it with this nut. And then you've got a three meter cable here to the sensor, which you can extend up to 23 meters. Yeah, you can, you can buy these 20 meter extensions on AliExpress as well. I link them down below. Um, including the inverter as well and all the other stuff. As I said, you can buy a one kilowatt version or a two kilowatt version, but they all work in the same principle. They all have the same menu, the same functions, just the output is then different. There is an error on the current sensor here. It is not described in which direction this error needs to point to make it work. There is only this picture here in the manual and it says, well, if your reading is negative um, on, your, on your panel here, the sensor is the wrong way around. And I actually, um, it is two weeks ago since I installed mine. I think it was like this cable here needs to point towards the grid to make it work. But we can actually try both directions and see which one works and what happens if you put it the wrong way around your cable. So open this clip and you just put your active inside and close the clamp until it clicks in. And this is the whole installation you need to do. There's, you don't need to connect or disconnect any wires. It's not life threatening. It is totally safe to connect this clamp to your installation. And as you can see, now we have connected the limiter to our inverter, but it's still outputting 180 watts and we are still feeding in 60 watts to the grid. So the last thing we need to do to make it work is to activate the limiter inside the inverter menu. Set menu and see number two, there is the limit internal limiter. And we click OK to set the little tick there in the box. And we don't need to change the remote number because we've got only one limiter connected. Never seen any other inverters where you can connect more than one limiter sensor. But um, they may use the software on other devices as well where you can do that. So this is now being activated. We make yes red to confirm and save. And now we can see actually down here we are pulling 120 watt from the grid. It's minus. I think we are the wrong way around. I think it's not working. It shouldn't it shouldn't show us any minus here. All right, in this case we are opening our clamp again and just turn the whole sensor around. Put our cable back in and close the sensor. And immediately we can see we are going down to 27.5 watts only on the inverter. And now we've got the ideal situation here. We are producing 120 watts with the inverter, which is exactly what our load is. We have connected here at the moment. Well, you can see there's also still a five to six watt draw from the grid, right? And this is what the inverter does all the time. It makes sure we are not feeding any energy back into the grid. So you will always have a tiny, 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 very, very tiny amount of power coming from the grid. I mean, it's a 120 watt light and we are pulling five watts from the grid you have to pay for. All the rest is coming from your battery or solar. And these five watts, they usually stay regardless how much output or how much load you have on your house. I have seen 1650, 1700 watts going into my home here with this inverter and I've used only 10 to 12 watts from the grid. And here checking our meter, you can see we've got two 1.4, two uh, three watts coming from the grid still. In addition to what the inverter produces to power our house here with all the load. And the two kilowatt may not be enough to power 100% of my load inside my home, but it will be sufficient for probably 90% of the time to power all the loads in my home. If I use a little bit more in the evening while cooking, I will pull five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred watts from the grid, but the majority while cooking, while preparing dinner will come from these inverters, from the battery, from our solar here from the off-grid garage. Okay, guys, I think this shows you the principle of this inverter, gives you an overview about the features. 
we will do more testing as i said in the next video i want to hook up this inverter to solar panels and see how it performs then because this might be something you are into if you want to install just one or two solar panels on your balcony in your apartment and then hook up one of these inverters here and inject some energy into your grid of your apartment to compensate for energy you are using during the day. The downside with this inverter is it is a grid tight inverter. As soon as you take away the grid, the inverter will stop producing energy. This is not a grid forming inverter. It is a grid following inverter. It plugs into an existing grid and injects power as it can as per settings. It is not an off-grid inverter as the Victron inverter I have here in my garage. But I'm sure there are other solutions out there from Growbot and Victron as well, which do both, which can follow the grid or form a grid in case of a grid failure. But I mean, for $350 plus 90 bucks shipping, this all comes well packed in this in this foam parts here well packed in a box with nice lovely stickers on it and as i said i have ordered um, two of them already now and i'm so far i'm i'm super super happy with these ones okay guys that's it for this longish video but i just want to make sure i touch on all the menu points here inside the inverter what you can set what they are doing and what you can use the inverter for because i know you will think about how you could use such an inverter in your environment and i'm sure you can adapt the settings accordingly and make this work even for your environment at home unless you have a total off-grid system then this inverter is not for you well, it is kind of a hybrid inverter, but a very special one because of its limiting sensor. And it automatically adjusts the power output accordingly to your load inside your house. And I discovered these uh, SunCrit inverters here quite a while back online. And I watched a couple of YouTube videos as well. Couldn't find any useful information until I found two channels which are really, really, which are really going into the details with these inverters. But I just want to say a big thank you to Dimitri from the German YouTube channel Solaranlage and also to Christian from the German YouTube channel Der Kanal. Dimitri has two of them running for quite a while in his house and he powers his whole house from these inverters for a while with lithium iron phosphate batteries now. And he's explaining this in all details very, very nicely on his channel. Christian, on the other hand, is doing a lot of experimenting and testing. I really like his channel for exactly that. He's doing a lot of electrical testing with the inverter. In one of the last tests he did, he tested the trigger time an RCD has, which is connected to the Sun Crita inverter. And he found out that the trigger time of the RCD is actually far below the regulations in Germany, for example. So if you are concerned about the safety of these Chinese inverter here, this has been tested on Christian's channel in all details. So thank you very much to Dimitri and Christian for your wonderful channels you have and all the amazing work you are doing there. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching here. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. Thanks for all your emails, all your phone calls, all your postcards all your letters, the t-shirt you have sent me, and of course, all the beer donations. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. A special thank goes to Douglas, who has used my Tesla referral code, Jesse, who has taken delivery of his Tesla, whatever model he has got. There's another David who has used it, thank you very much. And there is Sherry as well, who has used my Tesla referral code. Thank you so much, legends. Mm -hmm.